The Picacho Mountains are in south central Arizona, close to Phoenix. There are a dozen petroglyph sites here with thousands of glyphs documented. Most of the rock art is considered to have been created by the desert archaic cultures that lived in the area, a majority of those being from the Hohokam. Little is known about who they really were. Very interesting is the fact that the area is known to have had an even older culture living here, a precursor group. So plain and simple, a majority of the rock art at Picacho Mountains are old, very old, and we know next to nothing about the people that created it. I chose this hillside because the geometric and anthropomorphic figures have stumped anthropologists for a long time. These look to be an older grouping of what is found in the area. This would be considered archaic in style and period. So what was being seen and documented at this location that caused the artists to not document normal day-to-day -day life, but instead what is on the rocks here? First, this rock art is a telltale sign of a period long gone for this area. Currently, the south central part of Arizona is one of the hottest locations on the planet, mostly void of running water and large bodies of water, except those that have been made by our current civilization to survive in such an unforgiving environment. Well, the fish petroglyph shows that this place was not always the way it is today. Running water was more abundant, rainfall occurred more often, and the flora and fauna were different greener and more plentiful. Something at one point in the past, maybe more than once, doesn't add up when you look at what was recorded here. We see many geometric designs and anthropomorphic figures that appear all around the world, telling of an event or events that were seen in the sky above and captured by those that witnessed it. The event had to have been of energetic discharges in the sky, plasma events. Think along the lines of the Aurora Borealis. But how could that be at such a low latitude, such as where this is in central Arizona? Now remember, it does happen on rare occasion. Understand that these same events were seen at many locations around the world during the same periods in the past. Those living at the locations captured what they saw in hopes of telling those that followed what took place, possibly because the events included some level of destruction to the surrounding areas. Did an ancient artist capture charged particles slamming into, into the Earth's magnetic field from an event that was Earth-directed? I always tell my students or audience, you can get more out of the historical data by looking at the full picture. In the case of rock art, the entire panel. Look to see what's around the main glyphs. What's the story being told? Can we figure out something in the records and not just our own subjective viewpoint on what it all means? If we see enough geometric figures that match up with what we have seen in the sky and has been produced in the plasma labs around the world, can we learn about the past from those that were documenting it? These archaic desert people weren't just sitting around doodling on a bunch of rocks. They had too much to do in their daily lives just to survive. Big picture. You need to gather everything around you. Direction they would have faced, distance, placement of each carving, etc. Here's another important symbol found throughout the world in the rock art. This certain style along with glyphs around the world from certain time periods also look to be telling a story of what was seen in the sky above. It was energetic, large, possibly followed by devastation. This is known as the changing of the world symbol. Here we have plasma experiment similarities. We can duplicate, duplicate the outcome over and over again. This was the Mega Ampere Spherical Tokamak Labs. Now all over the world, we can duplicate the outcome of what is seen in these certain petroglyphs. Remember, I'm not saying all glyphs of style are plasma events seen in the sky. I'm saying there's a potential for those at certain time periods seen throughout the world as having captured this type of energetic event in the sky. Another one of these styles possibly showing a plasma event in the sky is the plasma tree. There are a number of these from approximately 11,000 years ago. Think end of the ice age. Begin to wonder why? These are the similarities between the plasma tree and what is seen in plasma lab experiments. Six or seven branches tends to be the design of choice for those that witnessed and recorded the events above. Look what else is being captured around the plasma tree. 
Many of the other symbols look to be describing sky events or objects in the sky. Torus style. Is it signaling that plasma outbursts occurred in the past? Now, the universal stick man was another geometric shaped glyph that some physicists believe recorded events that can be reproduced in the lab. The stick man seems to have dots or circles on the sides of the torso or under the arms. Why is this seen at many locations in the world, captured thousands of years ago in the rock art? Anthropologists state there was no contact between groups at great distances throughout the world in the past. So were the events being captured planetary events? Again, another universal stick man. Shown in what seems to be the figures transitioning. Did this coincide with the event's transformation in shape above head? Look at the big picture. Capture everything. Log the data points. Compare style and culture time periods, if at all possible. What are the similarities found? What are the differences? This appears to be an in-between stage, going from one shape to another, possibly stick man to plasma tree. Notice there appears to be multiple plasma events captured in the rock art. Don't forget to look around you when you are at these sites. You never know what you'll run into. Some are not so good. Please remember that what was captured in the rock art can only really be known by the artist that created it. Obviously, we can no longer ask them what was meant by it. Everything else by everyone else is subjective. However, go to enough sites, collect the same data, look at the big picture, then maybe we might get a clue as to what this type of historical record meant. Last, ask yourself, what is missing from the rock art? Why was this strange style and weird figure so important to capture and attempt to preserve for those in the future? Thanks for viewing this presentation. Please subscribe to my channel if you get a chance. Until next time, take care.